mechanisms in organic chemistry can be really confusing when you first start to understand them. But if you understand what the curly arrows and bonds and lone pairs of electrons really mean, you can begin to understand what mechanisms show. We'll use nucleophilic substitution of a hydroxide ion with a halo alkane as an example. Notice a hydroxide ion has a lone pair of electrons, and a halo alkane is a molecule that contains a halogen like chlorine bonded to an alkyl group, and in this case we'll do a methyl group, so I've got chloromethane. The first thing to do is to identify dipoles in the molecule. Remember, chlorine is more electronegative than carbon, so it has a delta minus leaving the carbon delta plus. What that really means is the electron pair in that carbon-chlorine covalent bond is being pulled towards the chlorine, so we draw it slightly closer to the chlorine. Now, remember, the opposite charges are trapped, so we've got a delta plus charge on the carbon, and we've got an electron pair on the oxygen of the hydroxide ion, and that's negatively charged. The mechanism works because of the attraction between opposite charges. So it's worth being able to spot where we get these dipoles in our molecules. Remember, halogens are electronegative, oxygen, nitrogen, they're electronegative, so they'll often pull electrons towards themselves. In this mechanism, we see the formation of a new bond, and the new bond forms between the oxygen atom on the hydroxide ion and the carbon atom of the halo alkane. Let's just show where that bond's going to form with this green dotted line. And that bond forms due to the movement of the electron pair on the oxygen atom of the hydroxide. So we draw a curly arrow showing that movement of electrons and just stop short of that carbon. So that's where those electrons are going to end up. And then in a second curly arrow, we draw from halfway through the CCL bond to the chlorine, which shows a bond breaking. The thing to remember is both of those happen at the same time. We make a, a new bond between the oxygen and the carbon, and that new bond is being formed due to the movement of the lone pairs on the oxygen just up to that carbon, and it bonds those two atoms together. And exactly at the same time, as that bond is being made, we also break the bond between the carbon and the chlorine, or in fact, it could be any halogen. In this case, we're just talking about chloromethane. So we make a CO bond and we break a CCL bond, and that will help you predict the product. Let's see what we form. If we've made a bond between that carbon and oxygen, the oxygen still joined to the hydrogen, so we're going to form an alcohol, in this case, methanol. But we're also going to form a chloride ion. Why? Because when the CCL bond broke, both of the electrons went from that bond onto the chlorine atom. Chlorine gained a net one electron. So you see you've got your new COH bond, which has made the alcohol. And you've also got a negatively charged chloride ion. Notice the charge is balanced. At the beginning, we have a negatively charged hydroxide ion and a neutral molecule. At the end, we have a neutral molecule and a negatively charged chloride ion.